Welcome to Biology Access. In today's class, we'll be talking about glycolysis. If you know you are new to the channel, please kindly subscribe and press the like button so that you get notification whenever I post a new video. Glycolysis is actually a metabolic reaction where glucose molecule is converted to pyruvate molecule. In this process, energy is released usually in the form of ATP, so as NADH. Right? Now, this process occurs in the cytosol of the cell. So, in general, or in summary, glucose, cis carbon molecule, is converted to two pyruvate. Each pyruvate is actually a three carbon molecule. So, this two pyruvate molecule means both of them have what cis carbon. All right? So, please take note. This glycolysis occurs in 10 steps. And step one to five, which I call the first phase produces two molecules of what glyceride had. This process, step one to five, actually consumes two ATP molecules. So in this phase, instead of producing energy, energy is actually being consumed. Why the second phase, which is step six to ten, it produces two pyruvate molecules. This second phase actually produces four ATP molecules as well as two NADH molecules. So, if we have to talk about the general net reaction of photosynthesis, we realize that glucose produces two pyruvate, and in this process, two net ATP. Remember, four ATP is produced here. If you subtract the two that is consumed here from this four, we realize that we have two net ATP as gain, as energy gained in this process. While we also have NADH being produced, as uh, NAD uh, plus is invested, NADH is being produced as well as water is given out. So please take note. Let's go into details of this glycolysis or glycolysis what, process. All right? It starts with glucose molecule, as I have mentioned before. Now, realize that this is glucose molecule. And glucose molecule has is a six-carbon compound. One carbon, one carbon, two carbon, three carbon, four carbon, five carbon, six. Realize that it's a six-carbon compound. All right? Now, this glucose is converted to what? Glucose cis phosphate. What is the difference between this and this? Realize that a phosphate group is attached, is used to replace what? This hydrogen what? group, or this oxygen, hydrogen, sorry, is removed, and the phosphate group is used to replace this hydrogen. All right? Now, for this to occur, enzyme catalyzes this what? Reaction. And the enzyme that actually catalyzes the reaction is called what? Hezokinase. Hezo means six. Remember, it's a six carbon compound. But to be specific, we can regard it as what? Glucose kinase. Kinases, or the enzyme kinases, are actually responsible for phosphorylation of compound. So, this, in this process, one ATP is invested. That means we realize that this phosphate that is actually attached to this comes from what the ATP that is invested because one ATP which is adenosine triphosphate is invested and ADP is what given out. Please take note of that. All right. Now this glucose six phosphate in the next phase, this is guided as a step one. The, in the next step, this glucose six phosphate is actually converted to fructose six phosphate. Please take note that this is actually fructose six phosphate. Let's call it here fructose 6-phosphate. Now, what is the difference? What can you notice as, as the difference between this fructose 6-phosphate and the glucose 6-phosphate? Let's not go into the fact that one half high the hydro and the other half the ketone group. No. Let's just take a little difference from the structure that we see here. This is a 6 member ring structure and this is a five member ring structure you can count it one two three four five six and this is one two three four five now this is the difference and this compound and this compound they have the same molecular formula but their structure is different in this case we call that isomerism in chemistry that means this compound they have the same molecular formula if you count the number of carbon here is the same thing as the number of carbon here Number of oxygen here is the same thing as the number of oxygen here. The number of uh, phosphorus here is the number of phosphorus here. Why the last the number of hydrogen is the same thing. 
So the fact that they have the same molecular formula but this different structural formula is called isomerism. So fructose is essentially an isomer of glucose. Now, the enzyme that is responsible for changing glucose to fructose, six phosphate, is called isomerase enzyme. Isomerase what? Enzyme. Now, the fact that it is changing a hexose group as well as a hexose group that a phosphate is attached, you can call it phosphohexose what? Isomerase. But you can just put isomerase there, it will still be correct. All right? Remember this sign. This sign means it is not reversible. Why this sign means the process is actually reversible. Now, this is fructose 6-phosphate. Fructose 6-phosphate can now be phosphorylated to what? Fructose 1,6-diphosphate. This is, remember, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The difference between this structure and this structure, you can take a look at it from the diagram. This has been replaced with a phosphate group. So in this stage, in this stage, we realize that another ATP is what invested and ADP is given at. And a phosphate group actually replaces this molecule here. This is called fructose 1,6-diphosphate. The name is actually written on the board. All right? Now, this fructose 1,6 diaphosate can be converted. This is, I can call this step three, right? This fructose 1,6 diaphosate is converted to 2, 3 carbon compound. 2, 3 carbon compound in step four. In step four. And the two compounds are actually dihydrose acetate phosphate. This is dihydrose acetate phosphate. Spelling of this is on the board in case you cannot see my little handwriting. All right? Why the next is actually glyceride, they had three phosphate. Now, please take note that a six carbon compound here is now actually converted, converted to a three carbon compound. This is a three carbon compound. This is a three carbon compound. Now, if you add the two, you still have your six carbon compound present. All right? Now, this reaction, as you can see, is actually what? A reversible reaction and is catalyzed by an enzyme called the adulase. In step five, this dihydroxy acetate phosphate is actually converted to glyceride dehydrate phosphate because this is the compound or the molecule that is actually, that actually continuing the reaction into step six. So, the fact that this is continually being used up means the equilibrium reaction will always shift towards the production of what glyceride dehydrate phosphate. All right. Take note: this will now be converted to glyceride dehydrate phosphate in step five by an enzyme called what TPI, triose phosphate isomerase. Remember, both of them are actually isomers. So triose phosphate isomerase is the enzyme that actually converts um, dihydroxyl acetate phosphate into glyceridehydrate phosphate. Now, this glyceridehydrate phosphate, we now have two molecules of glyceridehydrate phosphate because one was here before and the other was converted from dihydroxyl to what? Glyceridehydrate phosphate. In step six, we have this glyceride dehydrate phosphate, which, we, please take note that we now have two molecules of glyceride dehydrate phosphate entering into step six. So anything that is being produced is actually double. So we have glyceride dehydrate phosphate being converted into 1,3 biphosphate glycerate. Please take note, some of the naming of this compound is actually you utilize some of the stuff that is present there, or some of the uh, elements that are present there. Phosphate is actually present in, in carbon 1 and carbon 3. So it's actually 1,3 biphosphate glycerate. All right? Now, this 1,3 biphosphate glycerate now enter the next But I want you to take note that two NADH that is produced in glycolysis is actually generated in step 6. 
because NADs plus is invested and NAD is actually generated. And remember that we have two gl uh, glass right there, three phosphate molecules actually present or actually going into this phase. So we now have a situation whereby it's actually one will generate one NADH and the other will generate another NADH, which means this reaction actually gives rise to the two NADH that is gotten during uh, the glycolysis process. And NADH actually play a role in energy generation in the body of humans. All right. Taking that this reaction is actually catalyzed by an enzyme called glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. So step six actually produces 1,3-biphosphoglycerate, which is shown on the board. Yes, phosphate group in carbon one and carbon three. Now, this is converted to three phosphoglycerate. What's the difference between this structure and this structure? You realize that a phosphate group has been donated to ATP. So ADP, adenosine diphosphate, actually entered the equation, and the phosphate group was donated by this molecule to ADP and it's converted to what ATP. ATP is now produced in the form of energy. This reaction is actually catalyzed by phosphoglycerate kinase. Note that from step five is actually two glyceride that is actually that actually enter the reaction. So it means that two of these will actually produce two molecules of ATP. All right. Now this molecule, with the help of this enzyme phosphoglycerate mutase. This is actually an, an uh, isomerase enzyme. You check this compound and this compound. The compound, this phosphate group actually changes position with the hydroxy group in this. So it's an isomerase enzyme actually uh, convert three phosphoglyceraldehyde to actually two phosphoglycerate. Please take note again. The isomerase enzyme actually convert three phosphoglycerate to two phosphoglycerate with the help of what the isomerase enzyme the name is written there all right now the final or the step nine of the reaction involve the release of water from this molecule which actually bring about the generation of this double bond here. Remember, this hydrosy group and this is actually removed to form this water and it is catalyzed by enolase to give rise to a compound that was well phosphoenol pyruvate. Anytime you see this word enol, it means in, in akin, akin group is the double bond that they are refer, referring to. It's actually what catalyzed by what the enzyme enolase and water is actually released in this process. Remember that there are always two processes, so two water definitely will be released here. And the last step is the conversion of this phosphoenol pyruvate to a pyruvate, and this is actually what catalyzed by the enzyme pyruvate kinase. Again, in this step, the phosphate group here is donated to what the Adenosine was diphosphate, adenosine diphosphate, and ATP is formed. Considering the fact that two molecules of this actually enter the equation, so another two molecules of ATP is formed in this stage, making it four molecules. I will now have the pyruvate molecule, which is actually the end product of the process of glycolysis. And this gives rise to the net reaction of two ATP that is produced. The Overall reaction of photosynthesis is also written on the board. You can take a look at it and realize how this process come about following the process I just explained. Take note that in the body, nothing comes from nowhere. Everything that is actually in the body is actually taken in or we generate them. You take in food substance. During food intake, you take in some, comp uh, some uh, food substance that contain what? Phosphate group or phosphorus. And they are used to what? Generate phosphate what? Group. 
then you take in uh, your glucose, you take in a lot of food substance, protein, proteinous food, and all that. These various processes that are explained and a lot of material coming in. They, some of this material actually got in from what you the food that you take and your body metabolic system actually have this tendency to convert some of this uh, substance that you take from one form to another which may be useful or may, which may be needed by the body at a particular point thank you very much please subscribe to this channel to support the channel thank you